All right, well, welcome everybody to the April 5th meeting of the Board of Directors for Delta Club. Um, the same business that we always have uh, as far as what we want to do next week for a meeting since the cases are next to nothing now and everything seems to be, be fine. Is there any objection to meeting in person or doing the hybrid option? All right, good deal. Um, and I, I've kind of mentioned it to a few of you guys, and if anybody has an objection, we can, um, and now would be a great time. I, I still think it's good to reassess this every month, but I think for planning purposes, would there be any objection to assuming that we'll be meeting in person uh, indefinitely for the time being, unless, you know, because I feel like if it gets bad enough, we'll, we'll kind of know that we have to, to consider otherwise, but is that wow. an okay plan? I think along with hybrid, but I think we'd yeah. have to gradually phase out hybrid. Yeah. So. Yeah, I agree. Um, <clears throat> and speaking of hybrid, so I emailed Jim. Jim's not going to be able to make it today. Uh, he said he might try to get on here. Of course, you also got the, the treasurer's report. But um, with the Zoom thing, it should kick into the yearly subscription as of April 11th. So I'm hoping everything goes right because it wouldn't let me prorate it to, to end it when it does. Um, so we will have it for a year when we do, but it can be, you know, that'll be helpful for board meetings or other meetings if we want to pop up uh, and have different meetings. And this can be used for Aries and, and things like that. So um, we will have it for a year if everything goes right on Zoom's end. Uh, let's see. So the only, uh, and I know we've talked about it a little bit, but um, some changes I think that might make it go smoother. Uh, we talked about having an external speaker on the laptop or computer that would be hooked to Zoom. So that way whoever's in person can actually hear um, directly off that laptop versus having to try to get the mic and everything close enough to it. And then also um, to, to help where there's not so much of a, a quiet, odd wait, go back to the t about the five to 10 minute break before our program in person. So that gives us time to set up the tech stuff that we need before the program. Um, is the folks who are on Zoom can talk freely or it can be moderated. I, I mean, I don't, I think it could go either way. Is it who, who here is gonna be in person and who's gonna be on Zoom? next week i'm going to be on zoom okay i'll be on zoom i'll be in yeah. person i'll be inside i'll be in person okay in person gotta do the testing <laughs> yes sir okay well uh, for those since we've got a couple who are planning on, to be on zoom uh i'll mention it but if y'all can i guess just kind of keep an eye because we'll be focused more on making sure everything's set up for in person but if, if I guess I don't expect any of our members to go on rants or start cussing or anything like that, but if y'all don't mind just kind of keeping an eye on conversations and, you just don't and it know might be us. good. <laughs> Say again. Say so you just don't know us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so all right, good deal. Um, before we get any further, uh, Steve, do you want to go on and, and share your announcement? He's muted. You're muted. <clears throat> okay. All right. Well, while he um, while he gets unmuted, the um, we'll go on. Mike, I don't know if this is better for yours later or not, but uh, we did meet for that kind of little mini committee to talk about adding a payment to like a digital payment to the website. And what we pretty much decided was the best options probably if we want to go through with it uh, to directly use PayPal uh, because we should be able to waive fees or have low fees where it's no more than like a dollar or so, one or two dollars at most, um, and it should be able to add it on where it would go to uh, go to the person. 
uh, paying for the, the membership, but we should have a way, we've got to check on the details, but we should be able to link PayPal to the website because going directly to, to do a payment option on the website would be $8 a month and you'd have to pay a fee on top of that. So I, it doesn't seem like we have enough business to get to make it worth paying the club paying $8 a month to the website um, to have that option, but we should be able to. So that's why we figured if anything, we can just do PayPal and then just link it um, as like a widget or a button or something. So uh, the other part of that or is that- Or a link or something that, like that maybe. Yeah. Um, and the other part of that is that we should also, PayPal has an option where you can add in a form that's required to be filled out before you put your card information in. So um, we could do it that way where they, when they go to the link, they have to fill out some of the basic information uh, that would be on the form. And we have to look into it some more, but that should be able to be exported to like a Excel file or email or something. So, yeah, yeah, I would think so. But let's see. Uh, so, we'll, again, we'll have to do a little more research into it, but that's kind of what we, we landed on um, with a few things that we have to look into. Does anybody have any questions about that who, who wasn't on the meeting? Well, if you already have PayPal, like I have PayPal on my eBay. So, for me, it'd be you know, easy to pay. So, yeah. yeah, I'm good with it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we were thinking too. Like, um, I mean, I think you'd probably have to click and do the form anyway, but so many people and a lot don't, but so many people already have PayPal and they're familiar with it. And then it looks like PayPal is pretty easy set up where it's, you can, if you don't have it, you can still just click on the little link and, and uh, fill out the form and pay and, and, and you're good to go. So oh, is it about a dollar per every time we use it? Uh, I think what we had figured out, and I'd have to double check. Um, I think what we figured out, it was 1.99% and then a 49 cent fee on top of that. So I don't think it's more than one or $2 at most. Um, My bad. I think it's 50 cents plus. Two percent, yeah. yeah, and to where it would make it about seventy cents on twenty dollars, but we'd have to have twenty dollars and, and seventy cents, so twenty-one dollars. It would be about seventy-five cents. That's probably probably what it is. Um, so again, it's not much at all, and I mean, it, it's one of those things where if somebody doesn't want to pay it, pay that extra dollar uh to pay online then they can still print it off and mail in the check or they could bring it in in person so well, it's, it, no, it's the cost of a stamp so yeah it is yeah yeah and the envelope and paper yep and ink to print it off yep for sure. okay sounds good all right uh are you good now steve yeah all right, all right. a couple of things guys um uh, i i will be meeting via soon as my travel schedule has, uh, as we it's time to return to the office, my work schedule as actually has gone to to the roof. Uh, so we we have a, a guest speaker. Uh, he will be talking about uh, grid tracker, and I will send out information. Uh, I'll send you guys an email with all the all the contact information. Uh, so he's remote, and I form I I. I called Mary Jean yesterday and informed her that I'm going to be stepping down from my position right now as we return back to work and my uh, my new duties with the with the company is just going to take away any free time I have and my travel schedule is going to wrap up again so I won't be able to continue doing helping you guys out so I will have to sadly step down plus. Uh, between my running schedule and work schedule and everything, family time, it's just, so, you know, I got to find free time, sand balance somewhere. So, what Understood. else? Understood. 
Yes, sir. Well, and I, I know I told you this on the phone yesterday, but I'll say it again in front of everybody. We certainly appreciate you stepping up uh, to do what you could uh, while you could. And yeah, and, I mean, uh, I, I, yeah, it's very I mean, informative. It's a uh, life going back to a normalcy, and uh, it's just always when a floodgate opens up for us at work. So it's just been, it's just been crazy. Well, Steve, I'd just like to say that uh, in the short time that you've done this, you have done an absolutely fantastic job. I've seen all your emails, everything you had laid out for the year, and I uh, was really excited for all the programs uh, uh, that, that you were going to present. But uh, I certainly understand that whole balance thing as I struggle with that myself. So, yeah, mm -hmm. so it's. It gets to a point you tend to figure out okay what what has to do, that your mental balance also comes to play and, and like I said I even come back on my online testing as well because it's just not enough. To, literally, I'm working about ten to twelve hours a day. I mean, working from home, you never dis disconnect, right? And then now that we're going back into the office, and then my work schedule is just going to be crazy right now. So. <clears throat> Um, so we can, we can take a little bit to think on it. Um, the process, I mean, I, most everybody should be familiar with it, but since we have a new, a few new folks here, the process for a vacancy, um, would be where we just appoint somebody and then vote on it as a board, uh, who would fill that role. So at this point, um, if we just want to start thinking, we can either toss around a few names now, or if y'all want to think on it for a little bit. And then we can um, we can try to get something going. I know the sooner we can get that filled um, for Steve, I know I'm sure he'll appreciate it uh, getting that getting that over. And also, it gives a little more time for whoever's coming in to get acclimated to what they need to do. So, but like I said, we certainly appreciate your service. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks so much, Steve. Thank you. That was awesome. No problem. Yeah, no problem. Great guest. Great guest. Great presentation. All right. Uh, next, I'm going to go on since Jim is not here and I don't want to forget this. Uh, let me screen share for this treasurer's report. If there's any questions. Mary Jean, do do I want do we want to put that in sparks that Steve is going to be stepping down and that we're looking for a replacement, or do you want me to wait, hold off until we as a board, I guess, elect someone, or how do you want me to handle that in sparks? Well, I I would think we should put it in sparks, but that might get people to ignore our calls, you know. Um, uh, but Good yeah, point. we uh, I would think put it. <laughs> I would think put it in sparks and then I mean I don't know hopefully if somebody feels like they could do a good job with it or a decent job with it they volunteer but it's probably going to be something where like um we have to go and kind of tap tap somebody on the shoulder so uh I, I would think yes put something put something in sparks so all right, all right. sounds good and thanks again Steve Pre good job appreciate mm -hmm. it appreciate it guys yep All right. Um, I mean, I know everybody should have gotten this. Are there any questions about anything with the uh, anything with the treasurer's report? It looks like. Let's see. We had fourteen seventy five deposited, and then checks written out for six hundred eleven thirty eight. So that would be the. Um, there we go. Of course, all the, the membership forms, uh, we had 12 renewals. Let's see, the estate sale, um, that's 1150 for that. So that was a good good chunk. And because I think a Joe can fill in more information, but I mean, some of that was from the meeting, but he's been selling some after the meeting. So uh, thank you, and Joe, for, for doing that. We're up to 
uh, looks like five thousand dollars in sales. Because that that initial we did what three thousand. Three thousand. Three thousand. So of course, again, you know, with the state stuff, I mean, we'll we typically hold on to it for a couple of years, and it's I mean we're going and traveling and doing, but but that's good. That's really good. Hopefully, hopefully that number increases this Saturday. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, the uh, the check went through for the Ellendale Church of Christ donation, so that was three hundred, and then I'm assuming this was uh, reimbursement for Scott for refreshment supplies for one hundred eleven, and then of course the two hundred dollar uh, battery for Free Fest. And the battery is in. I got it yet uh, last night. Awesome, good deal. And with it. Uh... John sent a, a, an, uh, an EZ4 uh, power module. It's uh, for four port uh, power poles, uh, 40, amp, uh, uh, 40 amp fuses in it. Awesome. That's really good. Uh. So not only did we get it for $200 shipped free, but he also, he, he, uh, Ham Source donated the, uh, I think it's Paragon uh, Power Power Bank Four or something like that. I forgot the exact name of it. All right. Uh, does anybody have any questions about the treasurer's report? Okay. Mike, if you can, as you normally do, get that in, in Sparks um, so we can yeah, vote on it. Let's see. Uh, and then before we get into the report, so with, with Free Fest on Saturday, I wanted really to ask Mike, because um, I know it seems like you've been doing the, the Sparks stuff over the weekend. Is there any way that we could get that out by Friday or would it be better to consider, and I, we may not even need to consider it, but would it be appropriate instead to send out like a reminder email on Friday about Free Fest and what's, you know, what all is going on when the testing is and, and all that. So then we, if we did something like on Friday, Thursday or Friday to say just all about Free Fest and then the regular Sparks email on Sunday. What do you think? Because if it's if it's too could, much, if, yeah. I mean, for this one time, I think I could make an endeavor to get it out Friday night if I can get you know everybody's stuff you know to get in there. I could get it out Friday. What I would try to do is you know if I can get everybody's stuff by Thursday night, and then I can send out the draft Thursday night, and then get the feedback. And then make any changes Friday, and then you know publish it Friday night. Uh, I could endeavor to do that. Well, if that's what you want to try to do, um, I can get you mine yeah. probably by tomorrow. Yeah, and uh, yeah, because yeah, 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 I've already started working on the April one, you know, and uh, so you know Joe sent me some stuff, and and uh, I've already updated what's been sent, so. Um, you know, if uh, I tried to get out in front of it this month, so if I can yeah. just get you know everybody else's reports, then yes, I can. I should be able to to accomplish that. Awesome. Yeah, I'll get Mike, the you get, minutes uh, uh, early. Yeah, Mike, did you get a uh, an updated uh, training classes? Uh, today? Yes. Yes, uh, I did. Thank you. It's got pictures in it. Right. Yeah. I'll I'll in, I'll uh, put those in. The right place um well i know that's a big ask to get it out by friday uh so if there's anything we can help with i mean outside of I, I mean, we'll get on top of it and get you the stuff early but if there's also anything else we can help you with definitely don't hesitate to let us know so because it'll be good it'll be good to talk up free fest i know we try to um and i know it seems like it was a little earlier this year than it's been in the past which it kind of gets it away from that Easter weekend, but um, of course it falls before the, the meeting. So it'll be nice to be able to, to get to talk it up uh, and sparks and 
and all that. So, um, cause it is for good calls. Do you have like a commercial that I can put in there on that? Or is there you know, anything you want, uh, anything different you want to be put in there about Free Fest or? Hmm. I don't know. We can, I don't know if that's something. There's a good page on, on the Mara website. You could grab it from there. Is it like a flyer that they've got? It, it, yeah, it's not a PDF. It's on their main website, but um, you might be able to do a cut and paste from it. Okay. And then provide provide a link to so it has directions and math and all of that. So. Oh yeah, because all the that's that'd be good to add in, and mm -hmm. it's already all the information's kind of. Dan showing it right now. Who is he? Oh, okay. There we go. What I may do is just link to it then. Uh, it is downloadable as a PDF. There is a oh, link is it? to that. Yeah, that's how I got okay. this. So okay. there, there is a link to do it. Okay. All right. Yeah, that'd be good to add in. Um, that's a good, good idea. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. Well, we'll start over with uh, with officer reports and board reports. But since we've got a guest here, Daniel, um, how's how's everything been going for for your role? And is there anything we can help with? And uh, uh, well, everything's very easy. Of course, you know, the last test session was, was very simple. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> nobody failed. Uh, good, but, good. Uh, uh, yeah, I did talk with the ARRL about, you know, uh, what, what we were doing with FreeFest and, and the club uh, test back-to-back uh, -back like that. And we were kind of short on tests, so they just sent me a whole new pack that they send to, uh, to new stocking uh testing people so we we are overloaded with tests and everything else now so we uh, all we need is people to show up i was going to send out an email this week here just just to see who uh, can be there to put in a little time and uh let's see according to the flyer testing is 8 30 to 11 so dan hopefully it I won't take that off. long dan i'd cut it off at 10 30 oh yeah yeah we i want to <laughs> No, we're not going to have people walking in uh, late like that because uh, people got to get to seminars and everything else. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, I have had some phone calls. It's amazing. I've had a lot of phone calls about people wanting to test, mm -hmm. but most of them say they're coming to Tuesday's test. They're not coming to the free fest. So at least we know we're going to have some Tuesday night. So uh, there's one one of my students is going to test at free fest. Uh, Jennifer Myers said she was going to test at Prefest. Well, I've got 150 CSCE, so I think we're covered. <laughs> I hope we don't have more than that. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's all. Unless anybody has any questions or anything, and you know, uh, Mary Jean and I had texted back and forth about if we wanted to squeeze another one in there, but uh, I had some stuff from ARRL talking about. Uh, possible backup of everybody testing at the last minute. And if that happened, uh, a lot that were submitted at the last minute would not make the deadline and would be charged the $35 fee. So, and this has been, this, this fee thing is no surprise to anybody. Uh, we've had plenty of warnings coming up. So I think the, uh, the free fest testing and the Tuesday night testing are, are adequate to get everybody in the last minute here before the fee hits. And uh, also, thank God, we don't have to do anything about the fee. That's totally on the FCC. So it's very easy for us. <laughs> if anybody has any questions or suggestions or uh, any VEs uh, going to be there, please let me know. Definitely. And uh, speaking of testing, too, and I guess this is good. You know, if we want to share it word of mouth, I was going to mention something in the, in the president's corner, but. Um, like you said, it has been coming for a while, but we can still emphasize it that, hey, this is your last chance, free fest and, and the club meeting, and, and it could help get folks there in person 
uh, to test at the meeting. Uh, if we advertise that as the last, kind of the last one that we know of really that's in the area that, well, that Delta Club's um, helping, helping to, to put on. So, um, yeah. And then uh, Joe, I mean, Daniel, you may have known it too. I know I'd talked to Joe about it, but some of the the things that they've come out with announcing uh, like clarifications and and all that um, with the fee. Joe, do you want to kind of fill everybody in? Or? Well, um, the clarification is that the fee is only for new license, uh, uh, renewals, and vanity call signs. And when you submit a vanity call sign request, even if you don't get it, you, you, uh, you don't get the $35 back. Upgrades, if you're a technician and then you and and you've already been a technician and you go for general, there is no uh, uh, no charge for the upgrade to to general or extra or if it's a novice to technician or general or extra. Uh, so that's good. Um, I have a feeling there's going to be some kickback on the vanity call sign uh, having to pay. Uh, they they should have something that they only charge for the person that gets the vanity call sign. Yeah. Yeah. Con considering I put in sixty five applications <laughs> before I got mine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to restrict the number of vanity call sign requests. You think? <laughs> I, I think that's one thing that the ARRL, and this is, I'm going to bring it up to David Norris on Saturday, is that ARRL should go and petition the FCC, and, and if we have to, uh, to have that vanity call sign, have it changed to where only the, the one person that uh, uh, gets the call sign gets charged. That's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, you don't know how many other people are trying to get it. And, there's a lot. <laughs> and there's a lot. And, and there's no sense in, in charging somebody when they don't get anything. And, and, a lot, and, 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 the, and the elimination process is automatic. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I guess, I mean, Joe, he's been announcing it about the fee on the net. Um, so again, I guess just word of mouth and uh, we'll have it mentioned in Sparks that, that it's here, <laughs> it's set and, and uh, they should come and test at Free Fest or, or the Delta Club meeting if they've been putting it off and they're ready, so. Or renew their license if, if, yeah. if it's, uh, before the July the 19th, if the renewal fee, uh, time is before July the 19th, do it just 90 days before. Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, Joe, uh, do you want to go on with your report while we're on you? <laughs> uh, tech class ended last night. Uh, we had eight uh, people get their license uh, out of nine. The ninth one uh, had a bought a new house and they turned the, the utilities on and flooded uh, the hot water tank broke and flooded her house that day. So she was not in a in a real good uh, frame of mind for taking the test. So that's why she's going to take it on Saturday. Um, Hopefully she'll uh, pass it uh, uh, on Saturday. Uh, we had one gentleman from Frisco, Texas, which is outside of Dallas, actually fly in and take the test. Uh, he was a friend of uh, uh, Park, uh, Park Dodge. Uh, and uh, uh, he enjoyed uh, being in the class. Um, Last night's class we had, uh, which was the demonstrations, we went over repeater basics uh, so they knew how to program uh, a radio 
and uh, making sure that they don't turn on the, the uh, decode, uh, which blanks out their speaker unless the repeater sends out the PL tone. Um, we had uh, Rick Tillman do a FO29 uh, satellite uh, uh, pass, uh, talked on it and then uh, turned over. The ISS was coming over and, and it's in uh, FM repeater mode right now. So they heard a number of people uh, uh, getting in on the ISS uh, repeater pass. Then uh, uh, Rick uh, Pellicciotti uh, in K KJ4 NWQ did his uh, intro to APRS. And, uh, and then uh, John did uh, digital and uh, helped program uh, couple of radio or radio. So we thank all the instructors uh, for being there. Barry was in presence for the satellite contact. And uh, uh, I, we, we were a little bit short on the students last night, but I think that was because of the NCAA tournament. Uh, we had four, four students uh, that were there. And uh, Right now, I don't have anything uh, planned other than uh, possibly doing uh, uh, something the end of June or the early part of July for another tech class, but I haven't gotten it planned. Um, the Huntsville bus trip, uh, I've waited to uh, get a quote from, uh, uh, from Plan uh, Tours, uh, hoping that the, the price of fuel goes down some more to keep it from being astronomical. But I, I have a feeling it'll be about $80, just, just gut feel, uh, $80 for the uh, uh, trip. Uh, and I have a feeling the bus trip, bus is gonna run about $2,100, $2,200. And last year it was $1,800. Um, and, Huntsville Ham Fest has gone up from $10 to $15 on their ticket. Uh, you can buy a ticket for $12 prior to June the 19th, but we can't, we can't guess how many people we're gonna do and we do it by check the day of. So 50% uh, increase I thought was a pretty hefty amount for them. I did call my contact to see what the extra door prize tickets were costing and he could not tell, he could not find out uh, today. So that's the, the Huntsville bus trip uh, situation. Um, well, hopefully, who knows, but hopefully gas will, and fuel will continue to, it seems like it's a little bit on the decline, but I don't know. I don't yeah, wanna... it is. It's about, um, I think it's about uh, 10 cents down from what it was. Yeah. But I guess anything could happen though where it could increase again. So um, I hate to hear they raise prices on tickets, but everybody is. Yeah, everybody, everybody is. So I mean, everybody is. I mean, yeah. no, MARA hasn't. <laughs> $80, it's still going to be a bargain for folks. Yeah. Uh, compared I mean, to driving. It, so. I'm actually. Uh, I have a room reserved for Huntsville, so I, I'm, if I go, I'll, I'll drive Friday night. But it, if if I wasn't doing that, I would take the bus because it's it's no brainer. Mm -hmm. Especially with the gas price the way it is, I mean, you split the cost. That's true. Well, yeah, I guess two or three even people it... get together in a car and it reduces the price, but still, mm -hmm. one of the one person has to drive after being on their feet all day. Yeah, it's. I'm, yeah, I'm going to Dayton, and I'm already. I mean, the reason why I'm going is because I'm a, I, I'm one of the speakers at the DX forum, and I told my wife last night I'm rethinking this whole trip <laughs> because it's the cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, all right, Joe. Well, thanks for looking into that for us, and uh, yeah. Uh, Saturday free fest. I'm. We've got two tickets. I've got the banner. I'm going to get together 
material, uh, radio gear. Uh, I've got to go out to Steve Frazier's father's house and uh, and pick up gear. Uh, I'll probably have enough on the table plus some in, in, in a container underneath to uh, keep it uh, so we uh, we have enough gear. Uh, but if uh, Scott said he would help me. If anybody else would help me, uh, that'd be great. Uh, uh, trying to man it. I do need to be at the ARRL forum uh, when David Norris is giving his uh, presentation and voice my opinion about the vanity charge. Good testing. I'll be glad to help out. No problem. Okay. I would say I would help on VE testing. What I'll do is I'll twist some arms to get VEs to be there to, uh, for you, Dan. Appreciate you. <laughs> uh, yeah, who well, do you have so far that you know of? Uh, I've only uh, got four that I know of, but I, like I said, I was going to put out, or I was waiting until about the middle of the week to put out my email again so people had more of a clue as to what they were doing because uh, I didn't want people saying, yeah, they'd be there and then the last minute change out on me. So I'm going to send who, it. Who are the four, do you know, offhand? Uh, I, oh, shoot. I'd have to go find my list. It's downstairs. Uh, uh, Ham rings a bell offhand. Uh, Ham Hilliard, I know. He said he'd be there. I think Jeff's the uh, AJ4GY. And uh, I can't remember the other two. Old timers hitting me already, I tell you. Uh, Warren, maybe? Yeah. Uh, no, no. Wait a minute. I know there was something from Warren. No, I think that was about he might be there for Tuesday, but he wasn't sure. Well, with with he does taxes to where with tax season yeah. going, I, I was questioning. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember the other. Um, I'll, I'll put it, like I said, I'm going to put out my uh, my email request here uh, probably in the morning there, and uh, we'll see. Uh, I think uh, we, we always seem to have people show up, so I don't think it's going to be a problem. And, uh, we can we can manage with about four or five, but any more than that would, would be a lot better. <laughs> Just depends on how many uh, uh, testing people we have. Yeah. Yeah. What, what time are you starting? Uh, it's 8.30. Uh, go ahead and put me down. Okay, I, I didn't see who that was. Me. Barry. Oh, <laughs> okay. I see a bunch of faces. And uh, who was that? Okay, appreciate it, Barry. Dan, I, I would help you out, but I, I got up uh, twelve miles to run on Saturday. Uh, oh yeah. So I won't be I won't be done in time for to, to help you out. No, bro, I know, I know. You you got a you got a hectic life. <laughs> I appreciated that. Think about us. <laughs> If I were a VE, I would jump in and help out. That's one of those things I keep putting off and uh, just need to do. John, it's, it's, an op, it's an open book test. I don't think nobody yeah, fails it. It's free. <laughs> it doesn't take long to do either. So there's, there's no $35 it. fee. It's just <laughs> go ahead and do it, man. Just I, come I'm on. Here John. Right now. You I think can do it. It's, oh. it's an open book test. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Can you call that a test? No, no. I, I, I have never heard anybody failing it, so go ahead and take it. Gotcha. Um, I'll I'll be at Free Fest the whole time uh, is what my plan is. So I've uh, uh, I've got to call Dennis and see because I'd volunteered a while back to help them out in the kitchen area. I just don't know what time yet. So when I'll call him after this meeting yeah. and and hopefully either be able to help out with the. Uh, our tables or testing or, or whatever, but um, I've got to find that out first before I commit to. And I, I don't expect anybody to stay the whole time. I mean, you know, if we can work some shifts in and out, I know people want to get out there early to all the good deals before they're gone. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Uh, anything else you got for us, Joe? No, that's it. All right, uh, Scott. We want anything for snacks this time? Anything special? How? Um, and speaking of the meeting Tuesday, 
did you come up with a plan to work on that audio? Anyone? Um, I I am planning on getting there early, earlier than uh, than last time to try to make sure everything's good. But I think we'd kind of talked about it a little bit, and I, you know I think what? doing the external speaker would get our issue solved on that. Bobby will not be there. Bobby will not. Um, okay. Do we have that? Uh, I mean, do we want to use the amp that the church has and bring an adapter and plug it into your computer and see how that works? Uh, we could try. I mean, if not, I think any any portable external speaker, because I mean, it'll, it'll be quiet whenever uh, whenever we're listening to anybody on Zoom. I've got a I've got a portable karaoke machine. It'll have the mic. Huh. I can bring. It's portable. It's old, but it, it still works. I use it on the uh, out, out on the patio when we do uh, movie night. We have a portable screen that we put up, and I use that as an audio source. Um, it's just an idea, but if we use the amp at the church, it needs a certain adapter. It has that uh, that uh, quarter inch photo plug. Photo plug. I had an adapter to uh, to your. Uh, Is it a mono or a stereo plug? It's a it's a mono plug, but it's not a, it's not a R RCA. It's one like the um, headphone. Headphones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's for an adapter. It probably work. That's how that's how those microphones. The two wireless mics that are at the church are plugged into that uh, Radio Shack amplifier. So if we could use that, we could probably spread it throughout the uh, fellowship hall. I'm open for suggestions because I'm just thinking outside the box. Yeah, that's what I need. <laughs> yeah, bring it. Yeah. Um, from the chancellor's uh, estate. Right. Um, now, do okay. we have an adapter that goes from Mary Jean's computer to that plug? The, you know what? This is uh, stereo. That's fine. What's what's on the what's on the input? Uh, it goes. John, what do you got? Oh, from large to yeah, that mine actually, mine has a, a one eighth. From, John, from, that actually from might work. But we need to figure out, Mary Jane, are you using your laptop, your input? Uh, I mean that's what, and let we haven't really done much research into doing a hotspot yet. So until we get to that point. Then I mean, it, it seems like it it was reliable on the internet part until we <laughs> unhooked it and hooked okay. it. Okay. Right. Um, well, we could try it. I, I was just thinking outside the box if we want to do the input of the amplifier and see how that works. Yeah, uh, this is a quarter inch tip ring sleeve to a three point five millimeter tip ring sleeve. So. Trying to get that out of the blur here. That actually might work. The uh, question is a smaller plug fit into your laptop, Mary Jean. Absolutely. Sure does. Good. Okay. The only problem is it's only about a foot and a half long. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, that might pose a problem. I'll say what I can. I, I have a cord, but it's not, it's not longer than six feet. So anyway, so it's just an idea. We could try it and see how it works. Yeah. And we could um uh, just, I guess bring what you, you've got and we can uh if we're all or most of us are gonna be at Free Fest, I mean that might not hurt too. I can bring bring my laptop with me to uh Free Fest and or um, yeah, we don't have the amplifier, the amplifier's at the church. Yeah. I don't know. We'll okay. uh Okay, all right. Only suggestion. Do uh, you want me to bring that boom box? I, I'd say, I mean, if it's not an inconvenience, um, 
I just Since we'll be kind of doing a little bit different of a setup without having Bobby and his stuff there, I don't think it hurt. If it's not uh, too much to bring, I'd say just bring it. And um, I guess the only other thing I can think of, I know there's going to be a lot going on this weekend. I mean, we could try, if they're not using the fellowship hall for anything, we could try to run over there after Free Fest briefly if we wanted to, but I don't know that I would want to, commit to that because if there's a lot going on or it takes a while to uh to get all that packed up or whatnot we'll just meet early uh you know our normal time tuesday yeah and go for there um i was just thinking of the problem that we had was now my question is was the problem that we had going to be solved by the uh input of the uh audio well, with how quiet that room would be with the the setup that we had, I don't think it would be any, like, I think an external speaker to make a laptop speaker even just a little bit louder, I think that would have done the, the trick, because, um, but. Uh, Lay the microphone near to the speaker and it would pick it up and send it to the amplifier. Yeah. Okay. Bonnie, you can still use the Bluetooth speaker and, mm -hmm. and it will fill them in. And you don't need a connector. Um I'm honestly I'm gonna have to think about it. <laughs> Tonight's <laughs> probably not the best time for me. This I mean it's just been a long okay. two to eight. All right, but, that's fine. Um but we can we'll we'll get it figured out. Okay. All right. Next week. Worst case scenario, at a minimum, we can get it where I mean, I, I can think in my head right now where it may not be the best picture quality for them to see what we're doing up close, but I, I would not think that there would be any issue for us to have a speaker on Zoom that we could plug into the projector and be able to hear what they're saying. So, um, yeah. 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 All right. Thank you. That's all. Uh, no one has any uh, any more snack requests. Oh, I'd like I don't, some I don't hear any snack requests. So. You can get bars. You'll have to send me a picture. I sure will. That's all. Caroline, I thought you weren't going to be at the meeting. I'm not, but for future. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. All right. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get it figured out early. I don't, I think we, we've learned enough to, we'll, we'll get it figured out. Um, Barry. Yeah. All right. Um, first of all, I'm trying to get the image of uh, Scott singing karaoke out of my head. So, <laughs> all right, it's a bad box. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, I did go out to the A2 site uh, earlier this week just to see what kind of progress. Uh, nobody was working. But all the equipment is still out there. And I didn't even go in the second gate. Um, but I uh, was looking at the tower and what they've already done. They're putting up a third uh, coax or whatever you want to call it, uh, pipe, 18-inch pipe. And... Um, it's right next to it, and I can tell because it's shining, and the others are not to feet at this point. So they still got a ways to go. Uh, all the equipment is still out there. The basket's still hanging in the air, and uh, all that. So I mean, I can't. None of us can hardly wait until they get done with this because I know that's going to fix a lot of problems uh, we're having. But uh, anyway, 
that's the latest and um i'll keep checking on it every now and then it's it gets expensive running out there every now and then. Uh -huh. <laughs> from yeah, that's yeah, that's right. yeah from Collierville. Yeah, from I want to go out there and fly my drone. Take a video of it. That's yeah, good yeah, good, good, good choice there, John. Around all that RF. Yeah, that'd yeah. be a good, good place to try to fly it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh anyway, that's uh <clears throat> about the latest and I haven't heard any problems on any of the other repeaters. So there we go. I'll keep you posted. Hopefully I'll have some good news here in the next month. Good deal. Well, hopefully. <laughs> uh, I know, uh, I know you covered a lot earlier, Steve, but do you have anything else you want to uh, cover? Let's see. No, the 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 fellow that we're gonna do is gonna do the speaking. It's Ki2D, and I'll I'll send an email with uh, Sebastian. Um, so he'll. As soon as I get the Zoom link uh, from you all, I'll send it to him, and uh, he'll be ready. He's he's in he's in New York. Be sure to tell him it's Central Time and not. Yeah, Eastern yeah, time. yeah. He knows. So we 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 spoke a few times already about that. So hey, remember Central Time. So it will be eight o'clock this time when we start. Him, so it might be nine o'clock by the time he speaks. So so yeah, he's calls Ki two D. And what's it on again? I know you said you're gonna send the details, but it's a uh, it's about grid tracker. He's actually one of the developers of it, and I know that uh, there's some. I got off the drugs of FTA a long time ago when the propagation started to pick back up, but there's some people, aren't, especially new guys who who are antenna limited, are into it, and it's, the software is actually quite quite neat once you once you get it configured. It's interesting. It's been uh, kind of hit and miss for me. Uh, sometimes it works well, and sometimes oh. it doesn't. So it'll, so, I'll be anxious. Yeah, yeah. So, Sebastian has done this, this presentation for me before, and it's it's great. I mean, he he, he goes down to the nitty gritty of the software and on a, on a uh, on a ham level, not a techie level. So you'll you'll do a good job. Yeah. Carolyn. Uh -huh, yeah, we've got some new uh, applications here. Um, two new members, KY4MY, uh, Randall Haynes. Um, NS4E, formerly KN4ONV, Joseph Plunk. Then we have some renewals, Mr. Scott, um, for both 2022 and 2023, KM4PMU. And um, okay. KY4MI, Kevin Boudet, um, for 2020. Betty, okay, and he has a family member, uh, Joseph. D E D D L E. Okay. Uh, Dave Church, eighty four Q. James Dollar, K N four W G Z. Steve Fraser, K K four B P T. William Hawkins, A K four S Z. Uh, and Monday, WB4SWP, area number one. John Reiners, don't know who he is, KN4BVH. John, Steve uh, Romagni, uh, K4DTA. Guys, let's check now. Okay. <laughs> right, well, well, you can. WA4NVM, Rick. KN4LCV, John Volmer. Uh, w A four R W James Willard, and that's it. Uh, do we have a motion to accept these? So move. There's second. Okay. I'll Thank second you. it. 
All right, so Joe made the motion and Steve seconded it. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. All right, the motion unanimously passes. Um, uh, that's a good good batch, Carolyn. Uh, yeah, did, did most it of is. those turn them in in person or a lot of those still mail? I think, I think a lot of them did. Uh, okay. I think Jim mentioned he got a few in the mail after that, but we had quite a line at, at the meeting people turning in their applications. Also, uh, this month I did send out a letter per request for uh, to Park, uh, Park Dodge for his $200 contribution uh, to thank him for that. So that went up. Awesome. Month. And thanks to Joe who uh, served as an editor. Thank you, Carol. Okay. Well, good deal. Um, that's a good good group. Uh, John. Hey, um, yeah, uh, this month I actually have something. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> uh, but Mary Jean and I talked, and um, one of the goals is to get uh not only attract new membership but to have existing members uh be more active and um with that in mind i i, I reached out to uh jack reitz i can't uh ko4 mmq um my my interest in reaching out to him was uh to try to be in a positive manner to uh get him to uh, become like Skywarn trained and uh, 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 be more, uh, I'm trying to think how to phrase it, but, uh, but he's offended a lot of people. Uh, so, so we're trying to kind of mentor him and groom him and develop him into the kind of him uh, that we want to be a part of our group. And uh, he, he's a kid. He's 17 years old. Um, you know, he, he, he needs a, a, a mentor to show him the ropes and he's, he's kind of over, overstepped his bounds at times. Um, and I, and I did reach out to him and, uh, uh come to find out he is, I warned train that, that was the, uh, the, the first thing I was going to ask because I've, I've heard him on various weather nets, uh, where he's given information that, that, that really has nothing to do with, with Skywarn. And, and so, um, I did encourage him to uh, uh, take the advanced classes as well, uh, that we would be offering those, or not we, but the National Weather Service would offer those uh, coming up in the fall. Uh, so hopefully I've opened an, a, a door there for a better rapport and uh, that, that we can pick his brain and get some ideas on how we can engage some of these newer hams. Um, out of convenience sake, my uh, back backdoor neighbor, uh, Jason Terrell, KO4DOH. Uh, I've reached out to him as well uh, for some ideas on how we can get better participation. There are so many hams. I mean, Joe just had eight hams get their licenses, yet how many of those are going to check into the net on a regular basis? How many are going to uh, participate in our meetings, public service events, go on Huntsville bus trips? Uh, and so, so I'm just really, uh, really trying to come up with, with with good ideas to reach out and to uh, to get these people more active. Um, you know, we shouldn't have 17 or 18 members checking in on a nightly net. We should have 30 or 40 like we used to before COVID. So, uh, so I definitely got a challenge, but uh, have opened the door in uh, trying to uh, get that going. I'm going to form a, a small committee. Uh, Jason Trell probably, I'll, I'll probably ask him to be on that, uh, just to come up with ideas on how we can uh, better engage these newer users. So that's all I got. Hey, John, John did get... uh, solicit membership last night when he gave his uh, talk to the four. I sure did, yeah. Hey, John, can I make a suggestion? Sure. As, as we, I seen this in other clubs I belong to. Do, how we always set up some sort of an Elmer program here where we have a list of folks who can be called upon so you know, for example somebody can call me for our dxing 
Oh, somebody can call John for Aries or Skywarn. And so we have a list of people say, hey, you know, we have a, we have a mentorship program and then seek volunteers to join that and be Elmer. Right. Okay. Especially for when, when Joe does his classes for the tech in general, say, once you get your license, reach out to these people. Or maybe we, uh, the, this Elmer group just makes one phone call to somebody say, hey, I, you just got your license. You know, if you have any questions, you want to come see the station, we want to. I mean, I know most of us are introverts, but if we don't start doing that, again, the hobby is gonna die with us. Well, um, I don't know of an existing list that we have like that, um, but 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 yeah, I think that's a that's a tremendous idea, and that that was that was really one of my reasons for reaching out to uh, Jack MMQ uh, because he. Uh, He's sharp. He's a sharp kid. He knows his stuff, but he doesn't have the uh, the social development necessarily to understand when he's stepping on somebody's toes or overstepping his bounds. And, uh, the discipline. <laughs> right. And right. listen, you know, so. I, re I remember when I got my license at 14, I was a disaster. And, and even the, the guys that know me since I was 14, to this day, tell me, man, you are a disaster. We used to hate you when you got in the air. <laughs> But you know what? I have some good people around me who have, over the years taught me the ropes and that's how I learned, right? And uh, so it's the best way, I mean. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can put together. Yeah, because I guess right now we've got kind of just the general knowledge of if somebody mentioned that they were interested in something, then, you know, we could, we could point them in that direction. But I don't think we've got a formal list um, no we say. don't so okay i'll uh I'll, I'll make notes and try to uh, reach out to folks this month and see if we couldn't develop something like that that's all i got all right. uh mike i mean we talked a bit earlier about stuff but do you have anything else for us if you're there. <laughs> yeah, I, I am here. Uh, the only other thing I think would be the ad, you know, we had discussed. I don't know if that's on your to do, you know, your discussion oh, yeah. list or not. Uh, but I did not get a chance to talk to Bob about that. So uh, what the cost would be. But anyway, that would be my only input. And I'm trying to get Sparks out Friday night, by the way deal so thank you for reminding me because i knew i was forgetting something and it was that uh perry hayes reached out to to mike and he is running for a judge seat and was asking if he could place an ad in sparks about that and we wanted to bring it up and, and check with the board for one uh as far as we know, there's no existing pay structure for ads. Um, I, th I thought that we've kind of done like a bartering system or if, you know, somebody helped us out and gave us good discounts that we put, put their ad in for a little bit, but uh, I honestly wasn't sure. And I don't know that we've well, got was a pay scale at one time. So it helps out with Delta club instruction for, for the tech classes. I believe. Yeah. Um, yes, he does. Yeah. So, and, and that's something too, he's done a lot for the club. Uh, of course, kind of the other issue I wanted to ask about is I didn't really see an issue with it if it's an advertisement, but it is a, if it is an ad and it is a political ad, even though it is a judge, um, is that something, do we want to draw the line for anything political or do we want to um, just... Uh, I guess we don't really have a, a process for it really other than the discretion of the director of publications. So no, uh, have any issue make it, with that. Make it, make it the same as uh, the rules for hands. Um, what's appropriate for hands on the air? As long as we're not endorsing him. You yeah, know, I think if, it's fine. If, if it's just merely an ad, hey, I'm running for judge. 
Yeah. You know, and we make it clear that, that, that the Delta Club is not endorsing him for that position. I, I don't see a problem. That's just me. I agree. Yeah. Do we have any record of it being done in the past? We really haven't had many ads. The Chick fil A ad's been in there a while. Uh, I feel like I've seen a couple others, but, but I mean, Bob would have been the one to, Bob or Dan. I would have been the one to to have that information way back. Not not this Daniel, obviously, but Dan lastly. Joe, do you, Joe, do you remember any ads in the past? I don't remember any. The only thing that I probably remember is probably 40 years ago <laughs> when Clayton Neelam was running for state senator. Oh, okay. And that was at MARA and not Delta Club. And I don't think it would be hard to come up with the pay pay scale. Um, I mean that that I would think would be the easy part. Uh, so, but I guess the uh, he was Mike was trying to look to see if we actually had anything um, anything already existing that was well that was there. And then uh, with political ads, so there is there any objection to allowing political ads? Um, let like. Um, like John said, as long as we're not really endorsing anybody, does anybody have an object objection to that? I'm just wondering if we need to check with somebody to make sure the 501c3 organization doesn't have a problem with it. Yeah, yeah. that's you what just, I was thinking too. Yeah. You just, you just read what I was going to say, Joe. It's yeah. just, I don't know what the law, I mean, well, you can ask the judge. <laughs> well, <the> future judge. <laughs> I mean, but uh, seriously, I, I don't know what's the 503 versus that. I don't know. Maybe it's nothing, but. Uh. Hey, it's always good to have a judge on your side. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Let, yeah. let's, let's check. I'll ask, see if, uh, ask uh, Jim uh, starts with a G. Uh, uh, Galeno or Geller? Not, not Galeno. Uh, uh, the the judge that looked over our our yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. constitution. Um, he's Fayette County judge. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah, I'll ask him. Okay. K four J J F G, I believe is his call. And um, if it is, a, if it's not against any, if it doesn't violate anything to have an ad, again, not endorsement, but, but letting them place that ad, I do think, even though he's done a lot, because it is a political ad, um, I think we should still charge something because we could justify it. I mean, we, because I don't, I don't expect us to charge a lot for it anyway, but um, I would think that just kind of helps uh cya uh, with with us on uh um for that because it'd be easy for us to sit there and say well he's done so much for the club so we didn't charge him anything but if somebody else came up and um in theory his opponent or another ham who was running for something and we charged them and um i would think it would be easier just to yeah i mean my other question would be to joe it's what happens if uh, John Rainers over here decides to run for judge too? And then always only we have to publish him as well. So, we, I mean, you cannot publish one without publishing the other one, right? So I, don't, I don't know what the rules are yeah. when it comes to politics. So just make sure we are CYA and we're not, we're not exposing ourselves to something. Yeah. Of course, the other thing is that we could just say no to any political ads and keep it simple, but I don't know. I mean, I would think Maybe well, like is that le is that legal too? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's curious. We're, we're gonna no discriminate against you because you're a politician. Oh. You're running for something political. Yeah. Just curious. Is this a city judge or county or what? Uh, uh, it's, count it's county. County. Okay. okay. Shelby County. So. All right. I think um, you'd make a good judge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
uh all right so joe you'll check in on that um yeah. jim gallagher is the guy gallagher gallagher, gallagher yeah. okay yeah. let's see uh all right anything else do we want to have that note in the minutes or delete it what no uh, checking into Perry Hayes. Um, if anything, just maybe say that we discuss setting an advertising tier for Sparks, maybe. Okay. Um, because I know we I mean we need to do that. And if we look back in some old Sparks, I bet you you can find the the rate sheet. It's at the bottom. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's what I was wondering because actually if you go back to the Sparks history. You can probably find that and probably yeah. find any of your advertisements that they had. Yeah. Uh, Ned Savage mm -hmm. had an advertisement at one time in it. Um, I, I don't remember. I don't know, know who else. There's a, yeah. Good deal. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's see. All right, uh, we covered free fest plans. Um, field day, Fred Miller reached out and asked who would be interested, which clubs uh, would be interested in helping. And, and since nothing has changed and since we had just gotten done talking about it at the board meeting about how excited we were for field day, uh, I told them that we would be willing to help. So, um, so it's Delta Club so far, Neshoba, Mara, uh, so the, the three main ones. And then he said if any other clubs uh, that anybody knows of is interested in, in being a part of it to let him know, Fred Miller. So uh, there's not been any meetings yet, but. What, what role does he have? Is he? Uh, he Just coordinates it. Oops. He's president of Neshoba Club. Oh, is he? Oh, okay. Do you, do you know his call sign? KS2X. So Kilo Sierra 2 X ray. Okay. Thank you. Um, so again, we don't have many details outside of, of course, the date. And uh, I forwarded you guys the information, but uh, for the um, for for the minutes, uh, of course, it'll be at the Germantown Municipal Park again, where it was last year. Uh, so they've got that set up. So um, again, it's in the early phases, but but uh, the ball's in motion. So. And that's, uh, you probably have it already, Carolyn, but June 25th and 26th. No, I don't think it's, is it? Uh, I thought so, unless this is wrong. Yes, it is, I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. I'd rather you check, I'd rather you say something and we check than us get yeah. that wrong well, information out. I was, the date I was thinking of is actually the Huntsville Ham Fest of the 21st and 22nd. Okay. Uh, does anybody else? Um, we covered a lot and there's still a lot to cover, I know, but does anybody, um, anybody have anything else? Okay. Uh, well, I know this only goes for a couple of us, but everybody don't forget to get their stuff in to Mike by Thursday so we can get Sparks out by Friday and really push, um, at, you know, word of mouth on the net. Uh, we'll, we'll push it in Sparks trying to get folks to, to free fest. So, um, and then also if we can start brainstorming and try to come up with some names for some possible uh, 
folks who could fill the the director of publication or I'm sorry, uh, director of programs uh, spot. So, all right. Um, well, if nothing else, if there's no objection, uh, we will adjourn. All right. Well, we stand adjourned. You're all. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.